Hey YouTube, this is Primetime Pokemon. In this video, I'll be reviewing my Delisopod GX and Garbodor deck. Now this is the fourth deck that I've reviewed on my channel for the 2018 standard format. Definitely take a look at those reviews if you have not already. You'll find a link to that playlist in the description of this video. Also, if you're just getting into deck building, I started a new series on my channel all about tips for building a competitive deck. Check out that playlist as well. So, the remainder of this video, first off I'll sort of give an overview of this deck, then I'll show you a deck checklist, and then I'll go through each and every card in this deck, and state reasons for why the card is in the deck, as well as the strategy with the card. So this Golisopod GX deck is paired with Garbodor. I also plan to review a Golisopod GX deck that is paired with Zoroark GX. Now this Golisopod GX deck, the strategy here is to rotate Golisopod GX in and out of the active Pokemon spot. So you can do 120 damage per turn for only one Grass Energy card. You can add a Choice Band Trainer to Glycopod GX, and if you're attacking a GX or EX Pokemon, you can do 150 damage per turn, and you can knock out pretty much any Pokemon out there in two turns. Now the reason that I paired Glycopod GX with Garbodor is that I'm using the Garbotoxin Garbodor, and I'm attaching an item card to Garbodor to prevent all abilities. So that way, Glycopod GX does not have an ability, and I really am not dependent on any abilities in this deck. Now this causes a couple of problems, and number one is you're going to see this deck be in a lot of long battles. Now that's okay, because ideally you're trying to get the Trash Alliance Garbodor into play, and at the last couple of prize cards that you have remaining, use that move and do major damage for only one Rainbow Energy card each and every turn. Now I also use Tapu Koko in this deck. Number one, it has a free retreat cost, and then number two, it does spread damage round. Because this deck doesn't have that many powerful attacking Pokemon, that sort of helps Glycopod knock out more Pokemon in one move. Also, a very important Pokemon to have in this deck is Tapu Fini GX. Its GX move is very, very important if you're battling something like Gardevoir GX, even Zoroark GX, where it is an evolution Pokemon with multiple energy on it. You can use Tapu Fini's GX move and shuffle that Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into your opponent's deck. So that's really the strategy with this deck. It's not a quick attacking deck for the most part. It's not a powerful attacking deck, but I have won quite a bit of the time when I'm battling on the online game. Played probably 100 battles with this card. Like most of the decks that I've built so far, I've won about 75% of the time. But again, you're using either Guzma, Floatstone, potentially putting Tapu Koko in the active Pokemon spot, and then you're continuously rotating Glycopod GX in and out of the active Pokemon spot. Ideally, you have two Glycopod GX set up at the same time, and you can just rotate back and forth between those two cards. But this is a very fun deck to play. Like I said, it's very frustrating sometimes for opponents if they can't use Tapu Lele or something like a Zoroark GX. They may only have one or two cards in their hand the entire time. And something to watch out for with this deck, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure to not attach an item card to that Garbodor before you use your Tapu Lele in your hand to get the trainer card you want. And with this deck, I always try to use Professor Sycamore before N, just because I do not want to help my opponent get more cards into their hand. Now I can show the deck checklist on the screen here. You can see the amount of Pokemon Trainer and Energy cards. Now with this deck, there's a little bit more Energy cards. I'm using two sets of Special Energy, four of the Rainbow and then four of the Double Colorless. And again, I'll be reviewing the Zoroark GX, Glycopod GX, probably in the next couple of weeks on my channel. As always, if you have either suggestions on how I should improve this deck, or if you'd like to see me build a certain deck and review it on my channel in the future, please let me know. Okay, first up, I'll look at the Pokemon in this deck, and I have 17 total Pokemon. Of course, the main Pokemon would be Glycopod GX. 
so I use a 3-3 line of Wimpod and Glycopod GX. Both cars are from the Burning Shadow set. And the reason that I use this particular Wimpod is because of its Wimp Out ability. And if I start the game and I'm forced to put Wimpod in the active Pokemon spot, I can then retreat it for free with Wimp Out. Also, it does have 70 HP, which is a little bit higher than normal and it won't get knocked out as easily while on the bench. And then I have three Glycopod GX, like I mentioned, from the Burning Shadow set. I usually try and get two set up at once in play. I never really try and have three. Now this card does have a very good HP of 210, so it does take quite a bit to knock out. Of course, it is weak to fire type Pokemon, so if you're facing something like a Volcanion EX Turtonator GX deck, you want to try and use Garbodor as much as possible. Same goes for Tapu Lele. So three moves on this card, and I do use all three moves. The main move that I do use on this card is First Impression. This move for one Grass Energy card does 30 damage, but if this Pokemon was on the bench and became your active Pokemon this turn, this attack does 90 more damage. So it does 120 damage potentially for only one Energy card. Add a Choice Band to this card, and if you're facing a GX or an EX, it does 150 damage for only one Energy card. And that's the reason that I try and have two Glycopod GX set up at once. That way you can rotate back and forth between the two Glycopod GX and use first impression and hit with at least 120 damage per turn. I also have plenty of Guzma, Float Stone, and then I use a Tapu Koko just so I can retreat for free. If something in the active Pokemon spot has a free retreat cost like Tapu Koko, you can easily switch it out and put Glycopod GX in there and do 120 damage. And then Armor Press, if I do have one Grass Energy and then one Double Colorless Energy, does do 100 damage. Plus, it reduces your opponent's attacks against Glycopod GX by 20 the next turn. And then Crossing Cut GX, which I do like quite well, does only 150 damage for a GX move, which isn't much. But you add again the Choice Band Trainer, and then it allows you to switch this Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. So like I was talking about, if you are facing a deck that is based around Volcanion EX and Turtonator GX. You can use Glycopod once with the GX move, potentially knock out something like a Tapu Lele GX in one turn, and then retreat it right back to the bench. So all three moves on this card, very good. Now this deck features Garbodor as opposed to Zoroark GX, and the Trubbish that I use is from the Guardians Rising set. Now I use a 3-3 line of Trubbish and Garbodor. Again, a good HP, a little bit higher than normal, so it isn't as easy to knock out. And the reason I use this Trubbish, I believe there's also one in the Breakpoint set, is because of its Stomp Off move. It allows you to discard the top card of your opponent's deck. Of course, you never want to try and use this card in the active Pokemon spot if you can help it, but not a bad move Stomp Off. I believe the one in the Breakpoint set is based off of a coin flip, and it does do 10 damage when attacking. But again, you want to try and keep this card on your bench. And then in this deck, I use two of this Garbodor. This is from the Breakpoint set. It has the Garbotoxin ability. And then I use one of the Trash Lanch Garbodor. In this ability, Garbotoxin says, if this Pokemon has a Pokemon tool card attached to it, each Pokemon in play, in each player's hand, and in each player's discard pile has no abilities. And I really don't use its offensive bomb move but its ability is very good, and this essentially turns off all abilities in play except for this Garbotoxin ability. So it can shut down decks like a Metagross GX deck that can attach energy from their discard pile each and every turn. It's very effective against that. It can shut down something like Gardevoir GX that can attach an additional energy each turn. So this is a very powerful option for an ability in this Garbodor. And you see a lot of decks out there that are paired with this Garbodor. So I use two of this one, just in case one is knocked out. And then I use just one of the Trash and Lanch Garbodor. This is from the Guardians Rising set. And the main reason I use this card is because of its Trash Lanch move. From one Psychic Energy card, it does 20 damage times the number of item cards in your opponent's discard pile. So ideally, you keep both Garbodor on your bench and then at the end of the game, you make sure that the opponent has plenty of item cards in their discard pile. And then you can do major damage with Trash Lanch.
most times 200 plus damage which is very good you attach a choice man you really can knock out almost any pokemon in one turn and with the two garbodor like this with the garbotoxin ability on the one that i just showed you're sometimes going to want to set up your hand one turn early so if you have a tapu lele gx in your hand you're going to want to use that ability on that card a turn before you attach an item to Garbodor. That way you can get Anne or Professor Sycamore into your hand before you turn off all abilities. Next up would be Tapu Fini GX. And I just have one Tapu Fini in this deck. This is from Burning Shadows as well. And the main reason I use this card is for its Tapu Storm GX. I can attach a Rainbow Energy to this card and then it says Shuffle your opponent's active Pokemon and all cards attached to it into their deck. If your opponent has no bench Pokemon, this attack does nothing. So like I was talking about, if you are facing a deck that has maybe a stage 2 Pokemon set up with multiple energy cards on it, you can use Tapu Storm GX and have them shuffle that Pokemon all cards attached to it back into their deck. So it can really prevent your opponent from progressing with their strategy, getting their Pokemon set up, and really if you use this card on the right Pokemon, it can really win the game for you. And then I used one Tapu Coco. This is a Black Star promo SM30. I've used this card in a couple of decks. Now I use this card for a couple of reasons. Number one, it has a free retreat cost, so it will help with Glycopod GX using its first impression move. And then Flying Flip. For one double colorless energy card, it does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. So again, if I am facing a fire type deck, I can use this card. And then with this deck, this deck really doesn't have that many powerful attackers. So just doing 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon, it can reduce their HP a little bit and make it easier to knock out some Pokemon in one turn. And with this deck, you may have seen this deck list out there already. A lot of times I find deck lists online and then modify it when I play with the deck. I played with this deck probably 75 to 100 times and really couldn't find any ways to improve this deck. And then the final card, a staple in almost all competitive decks out there, Tapu Lele GX. I used three of this card, Guardians Rising set. Now in this particular deck, I actually use this card quite a bit for its energy drive move. Just because a lot of times I may get something like Trubbish in my hand to start the game, or Wimpod, and you can't really use those cards right away, so I may try and get Tapu Lele in the active Pokemon spot the first turn that I can attack attach a double colorless energy to this card and do at least 40 damage. So that's it for the Pokemon. And then of course with Tapu Lele, Wonder Tag, this card's ability is the main reason you want to use this card. And if you start the game and you can then put down Tapu Lele GX on your bench when you first start, then you can use this ability and get something like Bridget, put three basic Pokemon on your bench, or you can get something like Professor Sycamore, Guzma, anything like that to help you out quite a bit. Next up, I'll be talking about the trainer cards. I used 32 total trainer cards in this deck. I used 16 supporters. The first one here would be Bridget. I just used the one Bridget card. Now this card is very popular in the TCG. It's from the breakthrough set. It says, search your deck for one basic Pokemon EX or three basic Pokemon and put them on your bench. Shuffle your deck afterward. So ideally you want to use this card the first turn in the game. And then I try and put either two Wimpod and a Trubbish, or if I already have a Wimpod out there, I do two Trubbish and a Wimpod. So those are the, usually the Pokemon I go after with this card. And then I use four Supporter N. If you watch my tips for Pokemon TCG deck building video, both Supporter N and Professor Sycamore should always have four of in your deck. It says each player shuffles his or her hand into his or her deck, then each player draws a card for each of his or her remaining prize cards. Now the newest set to include this card would be Fates Collide, and early in the game it is better because you're going to get more cards into your hand if you have six prize cards left. Later in games, if you're losing, this card will help you quite a bit because it'll give your opponent less cards into their hand. And then if your opponent uses something like Magical Ribbon or uses, I believe it's called Beacon on Alolan Vulpix. You can then use N the next turn and have them shuffle the cards they just added to their hand back into their deck. Professor Sycamore and the newest set to have this card would be Breakpoint. 
it says to discard your hand and draw seven cards. So I use four Supporter and four Professor Sycamore. And this is better used at end of games or if your opponent only has one or two cards left in their hand, you can use this card instead and have your opponent not get any additional cards into their hand and hopefully they're stuck and not able to do anything when it gets to their turn. Also, when you're using this card, you always try and discard something like Pokemon. That way you can use Rescue Stretcher to get those Pokemon back into your deck. And then in this particular deck, I use three Acerola. With Glycopod GX, this card comes in handy. It does have a high HP. That way, not many Pokemon can knock out Glycopod GX in one move. So they can attack you one turn, hopefully using their GX move. And then you can use Acerola and put that right back into your hand and remove all damage. It's also useful because you can use Acerola on the Glycopod GX in your active Pokemon spot. And then hopefully you have either a Glycopod GX on your bench already or a Wimpod, and then you can move that to the active Pokemon spot and use its first impression move if you have a Grass Energy attached to it. And then the final type of supporter that I have in this deck would be Guzma, and this just helps with first impression. And then if you are facing something powerful, you can move it out of the active Pokemon spot. Or if you're facing something that prevents GX cards from attacking, you can move it out of the active Pokemon spot with Guzma. That is, if you do not have Garbodor already set up with an item attached to it, then the abilities would not work to begin with. But there are the supporter cards. Nothing out of the ordinary there. Items, I have 16 of. So first up would be Choice Band, and I have a lot of items in this deck just because I'm trying to attach a lot of tool cards to my Pokemon. Specifically, if my opponent has a lot of Field Blower Trainer cards, I can then reattach the tool cards to Garbodor and always turn back on that ability where it prevents all other abilities. So, Choice Band I have four of. This is from the Guardians Rising set. Very powerful if you attach this to a Pokemon. It increases attacks by 30 when you're attacking GX or EX Pokemon. So like I was talking about, you can use the GX move on Glycopod GX and do 180 damage per turn. And that way you can knock out things like Tapu Lele GX in one turn. Next up would be Floatstone. And this is essential in this deck because it helps not only retreat Pokemon that have a high retreat cost, but it helps with the first impression move. And this Floatstone is in the Breakthrough set if you're looking for a newer set that has this card. But again, an easy way to retreat a Pokemon for free. Ultra Ball is next. For Ultra Ball, this is from the Shining Legend set. It says, discard two cards from your hand. If you do, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So at the beginning of the game, if you do not have Tapu Lele in your hand, or if you don't have Bridget, you could use this Ultra Ball, discard two cards, get Tapu Lele, play Tapu Lele's ability, and then get the Bridget Trainer. And it's also useful for quickly getting to Garbodor, Glycopod, things like that. And then I have in this deck two Field Blowers, and this is from the Guardians Rising set as well. Choose up to two in any combination of Pokemon tool cards and stadium cards in play and discard them. Now I've also found it useful to use this on your own Pokemon. For example, if I have a Glycopod GX in the active Pokemon spot that has a Choice Band Trainer attached to it, I may use Field Blower on that Glycopod GX to remove the Choice Band and then attach a Floatstone trainer that way it can retreat for free and then i just have one heavy ball trainer it says search your deck for a pokemon with a retreat cost of three or more reveal it and put it into your hand shuffle your deck afterward so i use this to get to wimpod i believe garbodor and Glycopod gx and then the final type of trainer here for items rescue stretcher like i was talking about you use with professor sycamore or ultra ball you can try and and discard Pokemon, it says to either put a Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand or shuffle three Pokemon from your discard pile into your deck. And later in games too, this helps. If you are running out of cards in your deck, you can use the second option on this card and put more cards into your deck. So that's really it for trainer cards. Nothing out of the ordinary there, but again, the key being you have plenty of tool cards in this deck and then plenty of ways to rotate your active Pokemon 
in and out of that active Pokemon spot to utilize Golisopod GX's first impression move. As far as energy cards go in this deck, I use 11 total, two different kinds of special energy. I use four rainbow energy and it says, while in play, this card provides every type of energy but provides only one energy at a time. When you attach this card from your hand to one of your Pokemon, put one damage counter on that Pokemon. So this card really helps with different types of Pokemon that I have in this deck. Like Garbodor, I can use its Trash and Lanch move that requires one Psychic type energy. With Tapu Fini GX, I can use its GX move which requires one Water type energy. And also this card gives you an advantage because when you attach it, it does 10 damage to the Pokemon you attach it to. But then if you want to, for example, retreat something out of the active Pokemon spot and you don't have a Float Stone or a Guzma to do it, you could attach this card to your active Pokemon, get 10 damage on it, and then use Acerola to retreat it for free, returning it to your hand. And then I use four double colorless energy. It just provides two colorless energy at once. Very useful to have. And in this deck, a lot of Pokemon require the two colorless energy cards when attacking Glycopod GX and Tapu Koko specifically. So just a quick way to add energy to one of your Pokemon. And then in this deck, it is mainly a grass type deck. I use just three grass energy cards with Glycopod GX. I can attach either this grass energy or the rainbow energy and then one double colorless energy to use any move on that card. But there you have it. There are the Pokemon, the trainers, and the energy in this deck. Like I said, this deck is a lot of fun to play with. You can see the deck checklist on the screen again. But ideally, you try and turn off all abilities with Garbodor, and then you try and use the first impression move with Glycopod GX as many times as possible, and then towards the end of the game, if possible, you use Garbodor's Trash Lanch move and do major damage every single turn. So there you have it. Like I said, if you have any deck suggestions for me, either improvements for this deck or decks you'd like me to build in the future, please let me know. So there you have it. Thanks everyone for watching. As always, before you go, check out all the links in the description of this video, including links to my blog, Facebook, and Twitter pages. And stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.